In the genre of driving games, we have many titles in the spotlight. Games like Forza Horizon, Test Drive Unlimited, The Crew, and BeamNG.Drive are just some of the examples of the very well-known games in this genre. Yet Crash Time isn't a name that normally pops up, even when discussing open world and arcade racers. How did a game series based off a popular TV show fall into obscurity? This is the retrospective of the Crash Time series. Before I start, I want to thank the people who helped me put this video together. A thanks to my friends RetroGamerR32 and Imported for their general information about the series, and a very big thanks to Cobra Gaming who not only helped with the info as well, but also helped me revise and add on to this script. Crash Time is a video game series developed by Synetic, using their own 3D landscape engine. The games are based on the German TV show Alarm for Cobra 11, which follows Samir and his partner in their crazy work life as highway police officers. The first game released for PC on November 2nd, 2007 with the name Alarm for Cobra 11 Crash Time in Germany, while the English release dropped the Cobra 11 name and instead just uses the title Crash Time. In 2008, the game was ported to the Xbox 360 with its North American release being renamed to Crash Time Autobahn Pursuit. Crash Time 2 released on PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 in 2008 as Alarm for Cobra 11 Burning Wheels in Germany. In North America, it was released on the Xbox 360 with the name Autobahn Policia. This would be the last official release in North America. Crash Time 3 released on PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 in 2009, sporting the name Alarm for Cobra 11 Highway Nights in Germany. Crash Time 4, The Syndicate, released on PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 in 2010. Crash Time 5 Undercover, released on PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3 in 2012. Lastly, there was also a release on the Nintendo 3DS, called Crash Time 3D in 2012. In this video, I refer to the series as Crash Time and the games as CT followed by their number. For example, the first game we referred to as CT1. Before Crash Time, there were games released under the Cobra 11 name, including Alarm for Cobra 11 in 2000, Alarm for Cobra 11 Volume 2 Hot Pursuit in 2004, Alarm for Cobra 11 Volume 3 in 2005, and Alarm for Cobra 11 Nitro in 2006. Before Nitro, the previous Cobra 11 games were developed by a different studio. Synetic then became the main developer and continued to make the rest of the games in the series. Nitro set the foundation for the series moving forward, with many of the iconic traits of the games first appearing in this entry. After Nitro, the series was renamed to Crash Time outside of Germany. Samir and Chris are the main characters. The career consists of multiple long cases selected through the menu system. The open world maps of the city and Autobahn were not explorable outside of these cases. The physics are similar to Nitro, having a good balance between grippy and slidey handling, but the vehicles feel rather lightweight. CT1 also had a drone, a small, remote-controlled vehicle that is rigged with a set of explosives to take down a target vehicle. The Xbox 360 version included graphical improvements and the addition of a 4-player split-screen mode compared to the 2-player split-screen on PC. These improvements also made their way into the second game.
Due to Chris's TV show death, Samir has a new partner, Ben. He would be Samir's partner through the remainder of the Crash Time games. Instead of selecting missions from a menu, you have to go on patrol in the open world to either receive radio calls or reach a particular location to start a mission. Some missions also require a particular vehicle in order to start them. The city and Autobahn maps contained much more detail, with the environments being much more fleshed out and less rural looking than in CT1. The vehicle handling has been changed, where vehicles have a lot more grippy but twitchier handling. The damage model was also improved, with better deformation on vehicle parts. The drone also saw more use in missions, but it could not be used in the free roam open world. CT2 also retained the split screen multiplayer mode on all platforms, with it being the first game in the series to have 4 player split screen on PC. While the case structure remains the same, the main plotline has Samir and Ben trying to stop a terrorist group that is setting up bombs to target politicians. The physics, vehicle handling, and damage model relatively stay the same from CT2. This was the only game in the series to let players drive at night. CT3 kept the drone mechanic while also introducing a shooting mechanic. The difficulty options have been replaced by a star system, which would rate how well you handled the task in a particular case. Lastly, you can now look around your entire vehicle, unlike in the previous games where you could only look backwards. While every game was an improvement over the previous entry, it wasn't until CT4 that we saw big changes which really improved the Crash Time games going forward. The career mode did away with the traditional case structure and instead introduces a new, systematic approach to gameplay. The campaign has Samir and Ben trying to stop an organization called The Syndicate by installing cameras, finding gang hideouts, gathering informants, arresting criminals, and transporting them to prison. The star system from CT3 was removed and the difficulty options were added back. While the drone was used in one of the missions, it was pretty much phased out for the shooting mechanic, as you could not use the drone in the free roam open world. The physics were heavily reworked, as the vehicles have much less grippy, twitchy handling. The vehicles also feel much heavier, not only when driving, but also in collisions. The damage model also saw improvements, with much more realistic looking deformation. CT4 is the first game in the series to feature an online multiplayer mode, up to 8 players can join a variety of game modes such as races, checkpoint races, death matches, and free roam. CT5 returned to a linear campaign and removed the beloved free roam mode. The career has both Samir and Ben going undercover to infiltrate multiple criminal organizations. This includes them doing the crew's dirty work to gather evidence and then take them down from the inside. CT5 did not feature a city environment, having one location on the Autobahn and the other map located in the Alps. The shooting mechanic was replaced with power-ups which consisted of an EMP, grappling hook, spike strip, oil sprayer, roadblock, shield, and repair kit. The physics remained relatively unchanged from CT4, but the handling model was slightly tweaked, where vehicles tend to oversteer more than in their previous game. While the console versions retain the online multiplayer mode, it was missing from the PC version, as Synetic was not allowed to keep using the GameSwindle's live service for their server backend. This would be the last mainline entry in the series. The official last game in the series is Crash Time 3D. While the game used assets from the other mainline entries, it was not developed by Synetic. Developed by Independent Arts, Crash Time 3D is a very stripped down experience to accommodate the hardware limitations of the 3DS. The open world has been reduced to point to point tracks and the story has been removed for more basic missions. The game also lacked the main characters from the show. There isn't much to say other than that this is a very basic spin off for the handheld market. DP Entertainment AG, the publisher of CT4 and 5, declared insolvency and shut down in 2012. 
Without a publisher and with no income from their previous games, Synetic reshifted its focus to software development. However, they would also end up closing their doors in 2014, ending the Crash Time series. In November of 2018, a game called City Patrol Police was released on Steam. A year later, it was released on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as Police Chase. Made in Unreal Engine 4, it reuses the assets and vehicles from CT4 and 5, but fails to capture the charm of the series. Not only was the story and voice acting terrible, but it also completely ruined the previously very enjoyable handling model and crash physics. City Patrol Police was a poor attempt to cash in on the fans of the Crash Time series, and would be the last time we would get anything related to the series. While the general gaming audience has moved on to other games, there is still a decent sized community around the Crash Time series. Sites like Eleven Games have many German fans still working on mods, including adding in new vehicles, creating mission scripts, making additions to the maps, and more. Even for a smaller series like Crash Time, the community has not faded into obscurity. So not only has the community been an important part when the series was still being actively made, but they also are keeping its legacy alive even after all these years. With the closure of the main studio behind Crash Time, it's no surprise the series went with it. Though when the series was around, it also had its fair share of problems as well. With the TV show only being produced for a German audience, this puts the games in a tricky spot. Part of Crash Time's reputation was due to the show behind it. So for players who didn't know about the show, they might have seen the series as just generic driving games with the overdone buddy cop storyline. This could explain why the series only saw two official releases in North America, due to the lack of interest the American audience showed for the series. Adding to this, its limited digital availability also hasn't helped its longevity. Only CT2 and 3 are listed digitally on Steam. Both CT4 and 5 were on Steam Greenlight, but never ended up on Steam, most likely as DTP Entertainment closed before they could be approved for sale. On consoles, none of the games are listed digitally, making the series much more obscure as time passes. While the game series enjoyed moderate success, especially in Germany, it failed to position itself on the international market, as the market was saturated with popular franchises produced by big developers. With the series being made with a team of 10 to 15 developers and a limited budget, the games often looked underwhelming in contrast to the other driving games in the market. This was further amplified by the press, with middling reviews from many critics. Crash Time was able to exist in the market, but it just could not compete with the other bigger titles out there. A lot has changed since 2012, which makes the return of Crash Time less likely as time passes. Though, there are some slivers of hope that the series still might have some life left in it. In 2020, Unique Games Publishing listed two of Synetic's older racing game titles on Steam, this being Nice and Nice 2. They claim to be working with the original Synetic team and relaunching their other games as a possibility. They might be our only shot to get the rest of the Crash Time games listed on Steam. However, with more than a year since that original comment, it's hard to say if this will ever happen. The Alarm for Cobra 11 TV show is still running, so at least in Germany, there could still be a huge fan base wanting another game. Outside of Germany, most likely the series will continue to fall under the radar if they plan to stick with making the games based around the show. For Crash Time to make a full return, I believe it would not only need a much bigger team, but also a bigger budget. With how much content these new driving games have, it will be hard for a smaller company to be able to compete with that scope. Crash Time would need much more than just great physics and a good damage model to have even a chance of surviving in this new age of open world driving games. The Crash Time series may have not had the best campaigns, voice acting, or even been the most polished games ever. However, the series will be remembered for its amazing physics, fun gameplay, and its complete absurdness. Crash Time, you will not be forgotten and hopefully one day we will see the series return back on digital storefronts so it can continue to live on, even after its untimely ending. This concludes the retrospective of the Crash Time series. 
I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a nice day.